The following is an encore presentation of new expressions. It's Friday morning, four past ten. Are we ready? Of course we are. We've been here for a long time <laughs> preparing for this thing. Goodness. So yeah, we brag on something. What are we bragging on again? Um, the main thing. Kingdom. Yes. Kingdom. The one Jesus. thing. The oneness. The, the one thing. Yep. My co-host Craig Stevens. Good morning. Hallelujah. Good morning to you. Thank you for my coffee. Um, I need you it. You know, we we we. Uh, you know, there is this the the culture I believe in in commercial world is that you know your radio shift sh- starts at nine, so you're you're in the studio at five thirty and you're doing your uh, well. Eben and I, you know, we we're certainly in the studio before the ten a.m. start. Aren't we? In, we, we we come and we in with makeup and wardrobe, are we? even with all of that, <laughs> and we still manage to land a program. That's right. Right on 10. The prep. Oh, the work that it takes five. to put this together, man. It's, hey, no, just, it's 10.05. We can start now. We can start now. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> five past 10. New expressions. Friday morning. <laughs> what a glorious go. Friday morning it is, too. Actually, it was a beautiful drive <clears throat> coming in. It was nice. Uh, it was lovely. Still warm. Still very yeah, warm. Yeah, it was. Um, but, you know. But I got my vitamin D this morning. Thank edge you. edge out of the warm, and that'd be good. Uh, mm. We conspire for the success of each other and each other's ministries in yes, the studio today. It's a magnificent ministry on the Central Coast, Narrow Valley Baptist Church. Lead, uh, pastor there is Pastor Travis. Welcome again. We Ooh. keep dragging you back in here, don't we? Oh, I love it. I can't get enough of it. Yeah. Come on. It's great I, to be I reckon, here. I, I don't know, but I reckon if we had a tally of who we had over the last 12 months of guests in our program, you would have been pro- the top. I reckon most frequently returning oh, uh, over the last 12 months. He's I, running. He's in the running for the MVP. 100%. Yeah, yeah, That's ready for my uh, end of year just, award. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, gift. Yes, yeah. whenever you're ready, boys. That's it. That's an idea. What's that medal they give out every year? That special the, one, yeah. The footy boys get it. What's the name? They vote at the end of the comp. What's the medal again? What's it called? Something Clive Hill Churchill oh, Trophy. Right, something the Clive whatever. Churchill medal. That's we, actually, you get that if you are the, the player of the match in the grand final. But, you know. Oh. Um, so what's the player of the year There's thing? lots of those. Well, there's an award for every category. And it doesn't matter. Something Why am I even trying to explain to a ball player? Maybe we need the uh, Rick Broomer Award. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, that's what I was saying. That's what I'm going. We need the we, we need to come up with one. Come on. Yeah, yeah the Love any it. medal. <laughs> it's the NIM. It's the what? The NIM. Any metal, any, M, never mind. N E N E M. What for? New expressions metal. Oh, right, 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 right. right. That's the oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> you got to keep I'm up with still with the Rick Broom Christian metal. I think that's uh, something you got to keep up that. with the Rick Broom metal. Yeah, yeah, the Rick Broom metal. The sweet steaks. <laughs> broom, get it? Broom, sweet steaks. Oh, oh, never mind. No, oh, stop. <laughs> we were going so well, and now we've landed here. I'm sorry. Anyway, I'm sorry. Let's reboot. Stop. <laughs> Start again. <laughs> Pastor Travis from Nora Valley Baptist, uh, love that you're here. Love that we do get your voice in here regularly. I think it's a really important voice. And, uh, and you know, uh, we had you in this time round last year mm-hmm. uh, really very specifically because, well, you dropped on me something that I was unaware of, which is that there is such a thing as a blue Christmas. Like, because we're in Christmas season, we've mm-hmm. we've landed ourselves well and truly in December. It's, it's the time... I mean, what, the shopping centres have been doing it for months, but <laughs> I think everyone else is, yeah. my kids are on school holidays. Like, what? You know, it's just a little too early for me, I think. Too soon. But, too, know, soon. too soon. But um, that all of those flags and the fact that we've already had a cricket test match, no, we're not going to talk about that one, but today's starting test match, we don't lose in Adelaide, so... So I'm happy to talk about that if you want, but we could talk about more significant things than that. All of those are flags to say it's Christmas season, right? Oh, very in, festive in season. Absolutely. Carols are on. All yeah. the end of year things are happening. It's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. And, and there's a bunch of those things that, that, are, that emerge all over the community, mm. all over the region of the coast. You know, community carols, things are, are a big thing. And, and local churches. I mean, do you guys put yours outside? Did you, did you do that once? Or? Uh, we, we do a half-half. So oh, right. we'll do a sort of festival thing kind yeah. of out in the courtyard and on the back grass and slip and slides and all that kind of stuff. But then, then we'll move in for the, yeah. the carols themselves. Slip and slides. Now that sounds cool. Mm. <laughs> well, it is summer in Australia. Come on. <laughs> That's it. And, uh, and, and so, and there's, you know, expressions of it all over the coast. Local churches have their events. And, and, and I honestly, it is a wonderful thing that Christmas is, is a thing and a real thing here in Australia. Um, that the, the 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 entire purpose of which is Emmanuel, God is with us, right? God has come, 
and and we're focused on that. And it's called the silly season, and people get a bit silly, and and it's also our summer, and you know people get time off work, and and it's, it tends to be fun. It tends to be you know sport seems to be front and center as well, and. I don't know. Uh, workplaces tend to shut down or close down or slow up a bit, and and uh, and so it's a great big recalibrate mm. in the Australian calendar, isn't it? Um, and uh, and having said all that, it's not always the most awesome thing in the world for somebody mm. uh, to navigate. You know, for for many people and potentially for listeners today, mm. um, who who are going through drama, trauma, pain, whatever. Um, the idea of oh now I've got to front up and do a Christmas season um, with workmates, family, whatever. That there's, there's a gr- <laughs> there's anything but anticipation. Yeah. There's there's a dread yeah. actually for some. Yeah, and I think that's what we. Uh, I think we all feel it. There is this almost unspoken pressure that everyone needs to be happy and yeah. filled with joy, and this is a, yeah. a a good season that's filled with excitement. Yeah, but I think the reality for many people is that that's not. All of their emotions, sure, and some sure. of their emotions, uh, the Christmas season actually raises up for them. Yeah. And, uh, there needs to be space within this season for people to deeply engage with what's actually going on on the inside and in their lives. <laughs> Can, is there a better way of saying that? Because I don't know. No. That really, well yeah. said, like yeah. what you're actually talking about is being uh, honest about mm. how I'm going, how yeah. I'm feeling and why what what has transpired around my journey to to have me in a place that's anything other than pull the party poppers yep. you know um so at Narara Valley you guys have done that we did this last year and we just wanted to feature it um and uh we want to we want to drill down on it again today um you gave us this language around a blue christmas mm. which is something i had not ever heard of mm. and you Evan? no no, no, not until you mentioned it last yeah. year. Yeah, yeah. it no. was completely not on my yeah. radar, and you know, and it, and it was like, what do you mean? Maybe yeah. we start there. What do you mean by a blue Christmas? <laughs> well, well, I think we're just acknowledging what we've just acknowledged that for some people, as that as they come into Christmas, there's all manner of sorrow and, and grief, and mm. like even at Narara, the last six weeks, we've had you know two really significant funerals, uh, right. and so people are coming into a Christmas season. And this is going to be their first Christmas mm. without someone around the table that would have been there, part of the experience for years, mm. decades. Um, you've got others who are obviously coming into Christmas season and it's been a rough year and the end of the year just sort of brings up all those emotions. And yeah. so we felt like we actually need to create space outside of our Christmas Day and Eve service, which yeah. is, you know, it's still going to be full of life and fun and, and joy. Yeah. But there needs to be space, uh, a space facilitated mm. for people to engage with what's really going on for them at Christmas. Yeah. As I'm listening to you, I'm, I'm so, I love how you're saying this. Like, it's like there's, there's no right and wrong emotion here. There's just the fact is that there yes. will be yeah. potentially one dominant emotion or a plethora of emotion. Yeah. And all of them are okay and you can still be you and bring those feelings yeah. to the table. I, I know yeah. some people who will automatically self-exclude because they are going through some real misery and it's real and legit. And it's like, oh, if I just go there, I'm just going to bring the mood down, right? Mm. Well, what would you say to someone like yeah. that? <laughs> oh, I, I'll say so many things. <laughs> yeah. um, I think the last thing you want to be doing is sweeping things under the carpet or burying those emotions deep, deep down inside and having to put on a fake facade because you think that's what the family expects. No, no, no. The Christmas story is about real life. It's about the authentic experience of, of humanity. And it's the God who comes to us in in the midst of that. Yeah, um, yeah. So if I, I can just share a little scriptures if I can. Yeah, please. Um, so I, I'd love to direct uh, anyone who's out there who's feeling like they're excluded somehow from the Christmas story to actually go back and reread uh, the birth narratives of Jesus, the, the Christmas story in, in the Bible, and actually open your eyes to how many emotions are actually present in that story. So, like, for example, so Luke chapter 2, we meet a lady called oh, sorry, Anna. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. This, is, this is great. You know, put a, put a lens on that yeah. actually looks at 
what are the the emotions that people are mm. feeling in this context? Because I I reckon that's a new thing for some listeners yeah. today. Mm. Actually, you know, we're, you're you're going to read a narrative about mm. real life people. So yeah. so so help us with yeah, that. Yeah, because I think that the danger is we Hollywoodize the yes. the Christmas story yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's, it's all rose colored glasses and mm. it's sanitized and everything's yeah. nice and neat and happy and clappy. And uh, <clears> but actually actually read it as this is real life. This is yeah. authentic experience. And so yeah, so as I was saying, so there's all manner of examples i think on almost every every passage in in that uh, opening chapters of our uh, new testament uh, so there's a lady called anna that we read about in luke chapter two like she's been married for only seven years before she's widowed uh, and then we read about wow. this lady she lives to 84 so you got to assume that's wow. you know, half a century plus yeah. she's carrying this grief and and all this unfulfilled desires for her life because her marriage lasted seven, seven years before her husband yeah. passed away wow. and so you have moments like this well here's someone who's experienced something devastating life altering yeah. and here it is in the christmas chapters of our bible yeah, wow. um, you think about mary and joseph I, I don't think this is their fairy tale plan a for how their marriage starts you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know, yeah. joseph oh my wife is going to give birth to a child that's that's not mine i mean yeah. you know mary you think about birth plans and how important they are to mothers and oh there's wow. this census that tr- disrupts her plans and she's not surrounded by family and friends in the familiar environment mm. well, i mean you've got shepherds out there watching sheep by night you know dark cold watching somebody else's property i'm sure there's a few of their them sitting there being like this is not how i planned out my life this is not <laughs> what i want my career and vocation to be for the next 20 30 years um and then you get to some like heartbreaking stuff like yeah. herod like ordering the the massacre of of infants under two because oh, he's so jealous my. at the possibility of a threat of a future king of israel yeah so i mean that's extraordinary terror that's yeah. a feeling that's yeah. palpable in the text yeah you know and so you actually you actually <coughs> open up the scriptures read that christmas story and you realize oh there is room in the christmas story for my grief and my loss and my oh, unmet wow. desires mm. and my unanswered prayers wow. it's it's there right there mm. in the christmas story wow sorry that's a news flash for i reckon a truckload mm. of listeners it today. is i find myself in that story just mm. you saying that yes i mean, yes. I mean Christmases for me up to age eight were cool, mm. but then I come from a divorced home, and it just went haywire after that. And I mean, when you're a 14-year-old boy and mm. your Christmas list consists of, you know, five pair of pants and matching mm. shirts, underwear, and socks, yeah, that's 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 not what Christmas should be for a kid. Mm. Yeah. Now. <laughs> <laughs> it got dire <laughs> to where you know I'm, I'm washing two pair of socks myself yeah. in the laundry because you know I'm a ball player I gotta have clean socks for the next day your feet would just go crazy yeah. but then again I'm wearing shoes that are two sizes smaller than me and I'm playing in those and practicing those and I'm sewing them up every night yeah, Converse well. thank you Chuck Taylor <laughs> I mean and fishing wire <laughs> and thread yeah, well. I'm tying those things up wow. that's not Christmas wow, wow. so for a long time from then, now mind you, my dad might not be walking, but I'm still walking. I still mm. believe in God. Mm. I'm questioning at that point. Mm. And that had a lot <clears throat> a lot to do with me disappearing for 10 years. It did. I left college and came here, still didn't celebrate Christmas on my birthday and stayed on my own. Mm. Took Janelle, my wife, to bring me out of that. Took her yeah. to bring me out of it. To me, it was just another day. But I was intent on not having my children grow up that way yeah because i knew what christmas shouldn't be but yet i still hadn't attributed that to myself (laughs) you know what i mean i could see it for them but still i couldn't bring myself to celebrate it i celebrated it with them but not with them you know what i mean and it took her to snap me out of that like you know you got to stop this (laughs) i don't didn't want to do anything on my birthdays you know didn't really want anything because if i wanted i would have bought away before then and it was just a thing that she had to work on me and chip away and chip away and chip away and chip away. But when you came in last year and said Blue Christmas, I still didn't mention it. Mm. But I thought, great. Mm. But now you talk about the story. I can find myself there. Yeah. Christmas in a, in a place I did not know. When, we, yeah. when they divorced and I ended up moving to Watts, California, the, it's not the end of the world, but you can see it from there. <laughs> it was a horrible place. They weren't shepherds, but they were wolves. Yeah. <laughs> they were wolves in that place. Sure. And people jockeying for all sorts of power. I can find mm. myself in that story. Yeah. And, there, wow. and, and I actually can set it in my bedroom. There is more to life than this. Mm. This can't be the life of a black teenager. <laughs> 
this is ridiculous. Yeah. I could see that. And, you know, uh, that little bit of God that I still worshipped because it was it was really trying to those things really trying to wear that away from me Mm. but i had to have that as an anchor Mm. and when i finally got out went to the furthest college i could get to (laughs) to get away from that joint Mm. the freedom then took over and it just lost my mind so but still god was knocking at that door Mm. Uh, so i'm happy that i had that foundation because i'm not exactly sure what a person without that foundation would have done in, 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 in that in that in circumstances some people as we know will you know the happy season is too much for them and they choose the easy way out you know it's like a tale of two cities it was the worst of times it was the best of times um but something like this you know is better than us saying hey it's christmas we understand some people out there may not be enjoying it but you know what get to a church but no this is spectacular this mm. is needed this is a ministry this is another harvest. It's another field that needs to be harvested because you're not wrong. Mm-hmm. There are people from Christmas time who can't grasp it. I couldn't then. Mm-hmm. I couldn't get it. So, can yeah. I, I want to ask you. Thank you yeah, for yeah. sharing that Easy. too. By the way, that's wow. Um, you, your your journey, like I, you know, you've shared on air this some of this stuff yeah. uh, previously, and and that's an extremely challenging space to have have navigated. And, uh, and and particularly as a young guy, and, and, and when you described sewing up your boots, I remember you describing that once before, and I'm just thinking, that, how is that possible? Like, how, like, that seems so unreal today, <laughs> knowing you today, right? Because yeah. I walk with you closely today. And back then, it's like, wow, that was the shaping story. And then you, you sort of shut down Christmas, birthday and stuff for, you know, years. Um, what? So I was thirty. What feelings? Thirty-nine, actually. Well, that's what I wanted to ask you. What were the feelings that were brewing around that? Like, you know, when you shut a door and you don't look in there, it's kind of like that. That's just closed off, kind of thing. But then, then <clears> when when <laughs> this beautiful bride of yours starts causing you to revisit some yeah. stuff, mm-hmm. what are the feelings that sort of start to surface in all of that? I've always been entrepreneurial. When I got here, my first year of playing ball here, um, I could see this was a land of opportunity. So I didn't go home that summer. I stayed and explored what I could do here. Eventually, that my first summer here got to me, and I did go home. <laughs> After about two months into it, I couldn't handle it. And when I came back, I had a pretty good idea of the landscape. And halfway through that season, I think I had opened up two penny arcades or penny parlors. Oh, wow. One in Maitland and one in um, Toronto, up in Hunter. Christmas, I would go down to the one that was in Maitland and I would make a makeshift bed behind the desk. And I had a TV in the corner. I used to show all the videos from Rage because it was a thing. And I had my, 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 my Christmas films and my favorite films. And I'd hibernate in there Christmas Eve to Boxing Day. <laughs> I never oh, left. I had wow. all my food. I had a fridge in there. I had all my food and everything. There's snap bathrooms in there. And no one could see you behind the desk. No one could see it. So I'm just, boom, there, TV in front of me. You know, those films consist mm. of, when you think about that, it was so sad. <laughs> Consists of Scrooged. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Murray. So sad. <laughs> so sad. Um, the Breakfast Club. <laughs> um, yeah. Weird yeah. Science. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, John Hughes. All the John Hughes films. So <laughs> it's just it's just for things that entertained me. Yeah. But some of those actually fed that thing that needed to be out of me okay. and i just sat there and just you know ate and slept the night away and just didn't worry about it it was yeah. just i didn't want to be home because i knew people might come by or people might come knock on the door come looking for you you know you yeah. and come do some of the team members i'm just in the shop and just disappeared Ooh. so i did that um and when i let those go and uh moved to newcastle um i just pretty much i mean the church had things going on you know, and I would just be a body there. And I cannot not have fun when I'm in church circles. I like having fun. I like having fun, period. But, uh, and that was the strange thing. So those days, you're just in do mode. You weren't celebrating. You were just, I'm doing. Going through the motions. Yeah, I'm doing. Going through the motions. And people would invite, oh, yeah, what are you doing? I got plans. <laughs> and I wasn't lying. Those plans were, I was just spending it on my own, doing whatever I do. Yeah. You know, I eventually graduated from Scrooge to things like Anne of Green Gables. Still so sad. <laughs> <laughs> so sad. <happened. laughs> so, <laughs> I graduated to those things. Um, and, you know, it just went on and on. 
but as we got as I got closer to meeting Janelle, um, uh, Rima Newcastle used to have the Christmas parties and whatnot and blah 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 blah. And you go and you do that. And to me, celebrating with all those guys on a day which wasn't Christmas made more sense to me where I was. It, it had more of an impact than the actual day. Okay. Okay. Um, and then still Christmas Day. You know, more you know, I got plans. <laughs> To mm. do anything my whole day on my own. Um, never bought myself anything. Didn't have a tree. There's no, no nothing <clears throat> up that signified Christmas. Yeah, it's just what was on telly. Yeah. Uh, but then when we got married, um, Janelle, Janelle's one of seven, so there's always something happening on Christmas. Yeah. So that was the beginning of me coming out of that into okay, this is family, and this is a family that gets together, and. Uh, doesn't fight with bullets, but they still fight. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. so there was some familiarity to me, and it was comical at some point. Um, but that began to be pulled out of me. But she knew it before we got married. Because even as dating Christmas Day, you know, I don't even think as boyfriend girlfriend I went and spent Christmas with her. I didn't. But she knew it. But that took some time. And I got to admit, probably took about <clears throat> five, six years for that to come out. Mm-hmm for the gently pull that out and some of those birthdays and some of those Christmases I actually got mad because he was trying to do something I don't want to do anything mm. but that be a chip away a chip away I mean you we're all married we know what wives can do you know <laughs> it's not get the thumb but it's coming so <laughs> and she beat that out of me and she did and my birthday now it is still not some hoopla I won't have a hoopla party I, I don't I, that's never been me but I welcome the cake, I welcome the gifts, what do you want to do, and I spit it out. They don't always agree with what I want to do, which makes me still upset. It's my birthday. You said I can do what I want, but you don't like what I'm doing. But at least I'm doing something. (laughs) But that really took a turn when the children came because I knew I didn't want them to grow up like I did. No kitchen. So I made sure their Christmases, their birthdays, and events were good. Now... I still wasn't, like I said before, wasn't actually enjoying them and wasn't actually getting into them, but yet it was a road. It was, you know, the first step, then the second step. There were baby steps. I might have not known it, but I was sowing it into me, if that makes sense. And eventually, somewhere down the line, boom, Christmas cracked, birthdays cracked. Now I'm looking forward to Christmas. This Christmas I'm looking forward to resting because it has been a journey of a year. But I'm looking forward to enjoying, celebrating, and hanging with people and enjoying the season, which is what I was missing there. Not just my own experience, but the season, the reason. You know, because I still had that. But, Mm. you know, as a kid, yes, but you want the gifts. And they didn't come. Mm. Yeah. And because you had everything else, it compounded but it's not an easy process it's a difficult one but mine is not as worse as some people who have lost a loved one or um, uh, a parent or a sibling or a child or a marriage or a thing that was their life at Christmas time it wasn't that for me it was a whole year around every day to me was just one of survival um, until I got here, uh, got well, so I went to college, and that changed. Mm. And every day was fun except those two days. Um, so mine is not as worse as theirs. So I don't know. I don't know the pain. I don't know the journey of losing uh, a loved one, sibling, or something like that. It's just getting over the the, the pain of never having. You know that that's an easy one, uh, a long one. But you know, emotionally, I was still intact. I was just doing. I wasn't a wreck. As of someone who might have lost their, you know, loved one on Christmas Day, and you know, it's it's not a painful reminder anymore. So I don't, I can't speak to that, but I can speak to that place where I came from. Mm-hmm. So yeah, and that's the reality of your journey, and yeah. and others who will have had journeys that they could relate with. That there's mm. there's no um, bigger or lesser a, a mm. person's journey is a person's journey. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's what we see in that story. Is there's yeah. permission. To actually yeah. experience and feel and name these emotions. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, th- this has been uh, uh, utterly, utterly fascinating. Evan, thank you for sharing, you know, uh, Anytime. much of your story there. Uh, it's been helpful. Pastor Travis, uh, Nara Valley, you, you've introduced a, um, a blue Christmas where people might actually consider mm. doing the journey of Christmas from the authentic place that they are in. Mm. 
of maybe having lost a, a loved one or a family member, experiencing a grief or trauma or a marriage failure or a something that, that's, that's just shifted their familiar, natural, happier place and, and, and caused them to be in, you know, in grief or trauma mm. or, or deep challenge in some way, shape or form. So Narara Valley Baptist Church, we're going to come back to that and uh, hear some more of this Blue Christmas. Just give me Jesus here on 94.9 Rima Central Coast. And that's what we're giving you, Jesus, all day, every day. Yeah, good on you. Mm. That's a good thing. Thank you, Rima, for bringing the kingdom of God and the king himself uh, and across the airways. It's a wonderful, wonderful ministry. This is New Expressions. Where we just hang out, brag on King Jesus for an hour solid, and we've uh, been unpacking today um, with Pastor Travis from Nora Valley Baptist Church what a blue Christmas could look like. I know, and uh, yes. Thank you, Eben, for sharing you know, some of your journey. Uh, some of the listeners may have heard some of that before, but certainly it'll be new for many. And uh, and the idea that you know that there is some cause for people's journeys to be you know encountering of pain or, mm. or, or suffering in some way uh, actually i was with you guys at narara valley a couple of weeks back and met a lady who i had known from years and years and years ago and uh, and she found your church because of this very thing the blue christmas mm. that, that was um, <clears throat> um made available to the community um and she had only recently experienced the loss of her daughter um, and it was a very traumatic experience that that she had gone through, and and uh, gee, a blue Christmas probably doesn't even cut it. It was just the darkest and most horrible space that she was in, and mm. and heard that wow, I could actually come and be present in a faith community with all that I'm going through, with other people who've gone through or are going through some stuff and anyway found a place to connect and and there she is you know 12 months later and mm. still connected in with the church it's obviously a really important thing um this thing so so we, we were talking about bringing that grief bringing that trauma um and you can find both grief trauma and well genocide in 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 the christmas narrative it, all the feelings all the experiences all the all the stuff is there it's not the hallmark card Christmas story that that we uh, are most familiar with is there's you know refugee stuff. There's all sorts yeah. of you know grief and loss stuff. You painted the picture of um, a woman who had been um, you know widowed for more more years in her life than she'd been yeah. alive, and 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 the, you know what that meant for her. Um, and so those things are all evident in the Christmas narrative. Yeah. And you were saying, and also. <laughs> <laughs> and also. And also. But wait, and also, it is still fundamentally a story of, of hope. Yeah. Mm. And so yeah. while there are all these emotions present and, and very real circumstances mm. that people mm. are having to face and navigate, the fundamental message of the Christmas story is a God who comes to be with us in the midst of that. Amen. Uh, so God doesn't distance himself mm. from those going through a hard yeah. time. He's not afraid of the mess and the brokenness, the hurt mm. and the pain. Uh, but the beautiful message of King Jesus is that he is Emmanuel, the God who Come is on with us the god who turns up in the midst of that yeah and so yeah. that becomes this beautiful sense of restorative Amen. hope and joy and we experience comfort and we know that god is with yes. us right in the midst of what it is that we are experiencing and what we're having to navigate this christmas season i love that mm. the something that there are friends in the orthodox tradition have given us is this this greeting of one another which mm. is christ is in our midst Christ is in our midst, and ever more so in in this season where we celebrate Emmanuel God, Christ with us. Uh, when Christ is present with us, well, there's never a time when he's not present with us, right? Correct. And from everlasting to everlasting, he's God, and, and yeah. before the foundations of the world, and so on and so on. There's never, ever, ever, ever not a time when Christ is not present. So he is present, but we are often asleep to that. You know, can I say it like that? Do you, like we we actually don't participate mm. in His presence with us. Uh, we, are, we we can be too busy. We can be just switched off to. We you know we're not paying attention to, or just sound asleep. And I think that's what best um, characterizes uh, pre Christians who Christ is in their midst and yet they're asleep to that. They're not enjoying the great glory and benefit of Him with them. 
And so we preach to awaken hearts. So so Christ is the hope, isn't it? He, mm. he is the hope of of glory, of eternal life, of, of the goodness of God, of the redemption of all things. What a beautiful hope. He is in the midst. When he's in the midst of my pain, then then healing is possible, mm. right? And then and when he's in the midst of my pain, then freedom from that pain is possible or, or comfort in the middle of that pain. I said off air to you, even just comfort. And then I realized, oh, my goodness, no, yeah. just comfort. No, that's a that's a glory. That's a that's a really big deal, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, I mean, comfort, when you're talking about being comforted by the presence of the living God, come on! Uh, I mean, oh it really can boy. completely change your story and your experience oh. of that pain, yeah. knowing that it's not something you have to carry alone, not something you need to hide off from others, yeah. but something you can actually name, bring before God, trust God with, and experience God ministering His comfort to you yeah. in the midst of that. Yeah. Beautiful. All right, I've got a question for you. Uh-oh. So... You know, for some people with an intense pain and caused from grief and loss and whatever, and they can encounter Jesus in that moment and even encounter almost like a profound emotional healing that restores them, like in a moment, that's that's entirely possible. And, and for some, that's a testimony. And for others, it's like, Oh, this this is a long time of walking something out, mm-hmm. and uh, I was going to ask you why is that? <laughs> <laughs> That's not a fair question, <laughs> but rather, what would you say to 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 people who you know who are in this place of a long time walking out? Uh, mm. You know, w- mm. what would you say to? Oh, look, I, I would certainly say that God is in it for the long haul. I mean, oh, we beautiful. see that in the Christmas story is a God who commits to his creation. Come on. Um, Emmanuel, Jesus coming to be with us, mm. become one of us is this, and it's not a line in the sand moment because that yeah. commitment has been there since the beginning of, of all that, that has been. That's right. Um, but it is demonstrated evidence in human history that God is here with us till the end and it is perfectly natural Mm. and normal and to be expected that some of the griefs and the sorrows that we carry through life uh, then not quick fixes there it's not that there's something that we're never going to feel again you know you mentioned that story of someone who lost their daughter every christmas like at at what point do you get to in your life where that doesn't sting where that doesn't hurt and the reality is that's the stuff you carry for the rest of your days, yeah. you can journey through that healthily and experience God's uh, comfort in the midst of that, yeah. a level of healing and peace and closure. But it's always it's going to be, be it's always yeah. going to be there, part yeah. of your story. Yeah. Um, but alongside that is God who's right there with you mm. through that whole story as well and that whole yeah. journey. God commits mm. to his people. He'll commit to you in the midst of your grief. He'll be with you always. Mm. And I would agree with that. I mean, sorry. It, I would agree. That is doing yeah. something beautiful <laughs> in my heart. <laughs> that's, that's, wow. Yeah. Yeah, if, if someone would have came to me at that point in time at 14 and said, you know, don't worry, God's got this, that wouldn't have done nothing for me. Mm. But just saying, look, this is going to take, take some time. Just I know it's a journey. You know, it's a, that would have spoke more to me because yeah. it just says that you acknowledge where I am. You're not glossing over it with some godly paint. You, know, you acknowledge where I am, mm. and you're telling me it's going to take some time. Okay. I could agree with that. <laughs> At least I'm now yeah. agreeing with you, mm. which most psychologists will say you got to get someone to agree with you three times before they actually listen to you. So you, you've mm. got me agreeing with you at the moment because you understand where I am and not trying to tell me where I should be. Yeah. You're telling me where I am and where mm. I need to be is going to take some time. Mm. Yeah. Agree with that. Uh, you know, the thought that I had, I, I feel like I just want to say, you know, it's, it's human nature to – just to get this thing done and dusted, let's get on the other side and keep going, right? Mm. And it's almost like you want to say, don't do that. Mm. <laughs> like, you know, walk whatever you got to walk, mm. you know. Like, um, we, we seem so adverse to to grief mm. or pain or whatever that we, we just want the, the silver bullet or the magic quick fix or whatever and – and 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 uh, and actually, no. There's there is something of beauty uh, to walking mm. with the presence of Christ in in suffering, isn't there? Yeah, and I think that's the invitation: is that you you don't have to do that journey alone. That God yeah. is right there yeah. with you through the ups and the downs and the twists and the yeah. turns of the grief or disappointment journey, whatever it is that you're experiencing. Yeah. yeah. 
the invitation is to actually bring that before a loving God and do the journey with Him, yes. drawing strength yeah. from Him, drawing comfort from Him, yes. hmm. trusting Him with the process as you also do the journey internally. Hmm. And beautifully, in, in the company of the saints hmm. where where that's available, you know. Hmm. And I think that's what Narara Valley Baptist is saying today is, you know, let, let's walk with you in that as you discover Christ in the midst, as you walk with yeah. him in that healing path journey, yeah. let, let's walk with you. Absolutely. And everyone's got their stuff. <laughs> let's, yeah. let's be real. Yeah. And so yeah. I think the danger we fall into yeah. is this, well, I'm carrying this and I walk into a Christmas service and it's filled with people and everyone's happy and they've all got their yeah. lives together. No, 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 no. Everyone's yeah. got things behind the curtain exactly. and we're all journeying different disappointments so and, mm. uh, you know, hoping for answered prayers that we haven't seen answered yet and all yeah. that sort of stuff. Yeah. But together we draw hope from the reality and the presence of Jesus in this world, Emmanuel, yeah. the God who is with us. Yeah. Yeah. We do it, it together. Isn't comparison a killer though? <laughs> comparison, <laughs> comparison will do you in. I mean, because you, you never know where anyone's at. So you you never you never do you just can't assume. I remember hearing it was Kenny Copeland told the story of a gardener. And he's gardening the the the, the, the branches of this, this house and it's a well-to-do fella, and uh, the well-to-do guy is up in the window looking down at him, thinking, "Look at that guy, you know, just cutting my lawn, got a care in the world, just tending to the gardening, doing what he loves, having mm. fun." While the gardener's looking up, this guy, look at that guy up there, not a care in the world, this and that, and blah 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 blah, <laughs> this this and that. But the rich guy's like, "I don't know where my wife is. I got eight kind of things going on in my body. People try and take my money in the garden. It's like I can't even pay my bills. <laughs> it's yeah, just yeah. going back and forth. You uh, know what I mean? Funny. Yeah, hey, you never know, but you shouldn't." compare yeah so but no yeah. but i agree with you when you were saying that you know uh jesus is in the midst of that whole thing mm. and it's you know you need to walk with him mm. and you know i know when people say you know god's got this i hear what you're saying but god's done everything he's going to do you have to walk it out but you got to mm. walk it out with him yeah. with him and, and i like that i mean i mean that would speak to someone that would speak to a 14 year old evan mm. you know you got to walk this out with him yeah. it's not a quick fix he's not going to come here and put a bandit over everything you got to walk it through well, you, it's a journey. Just, you just shifted things from christianity is something i believe mm. to christianity is something that i participate in yes with yes you know actually you know we we walk with jesus we, our testimony is jesus christ is alive mm. he is present with us mm. what do you mean he lived 2000 years ago yes and he's present with us mm. right now and 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 he's <clears throat> present with you wherever you're sitting right now you know if you're at work or or um, in the car or whatever christ is present with you and uh, and you know um whatever wrestle it is that you're working through we heard eben's wrestle mm. earlier you know um of, of a really difficult childhood and that may be somebody's wrestle today still. Like, mm. uh, it was only a few weeks ago we had Pastor Brett from Wyong mm. uh, in the studio just unpacking the beautiful story of forgiveness and, mm. and how he can walk in that. I mean, that might be the key to some, some healing. But again, Christ is with you. Christ is present with you. And, and um, he has grace for you today to, to participate even in that mm. forgiveness or to participate in that that sense of healing balm that your soul needs, you know. Um, it, yeah, and, and I, I can't help but think this is part of the glory of Christ, mm. you know. Mm. The walk of victory, the one of the walk across, you know, um, through the streets of, of Jerusalem towards Golgotha, that walk of victory, that coronation moment, the crucifixion of Christ, where he absorbs all our suffering and pain mm. and grief and, mm. and remorse and tears, um, friends, Christ is with you. Mm. Meanwhile, stay on 94.9 because this is where New Expressions is. Love hearing from Chuck, long-time supporter of this program. Yeah, he loves this, man. Hey, uh, he loves it. Always asking listen. to be on the program. Chuck, we got to give everybody else a platform. you got your own. Come yeah, on. Yeah, that's right. Stop yeah. it. Stop, stop it. ringing. Yes. Stop texting. Goodness, man. Can't take those calls, <laughs> but, you know. Yeah, he, but he does love it. He loves He loves the fact we've got Pastor Travis from Narrow Valley Baptist with us. Yes. Um, so I love that, i got to say. <laughs> love the journey with you, mate. Love the journey with the faith community just up the road from here, actually, at Narrow Valley. Um, beautiful, beautiful um, gathering of saints that, that love Jesus and, uh, and uh, carry him so beautifully. 
uh, in the region. We've been talking about, you know, a, a really, really important conversation today about a Blue Christmas. Really, it's a service. I, it's an idea of, uh, of a church <coughs> service that, that you guys host at Narrow Valley. I just heard um, just a moment ago that my friend Alex, Buster, Reverend Alex over at Wyong, uh, Wyong Anglican, also host a similar service. And uh, and we were, what was that other thing? The gr- guys at Greenpoint do a yeah, group around Mosaic, China, don't they? Greenpoint Baptist. Um, they have uh, a group called Mosaic for People who are struggling. Yeah, with, sorry, with sorry. Mosaic for People who are struggling. That's what it is. Yeah, I'm re- trying to read the text. Mosaic, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, like, praise God, the <laughs> church actually has a response to people's pain, mm. and uh, I don't know wherever you're at at the moment, listening in and uh, thinking, well, I'm going through a great measure of pain myself, or I know someone or friend, family member. Maybe you might be, you know, uh, the 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 agent that God is using to to connect them with, you know, a place to to walk out um, that journey in the presence of Jesus. Mm. Um, mate, we we have covered a lot of territory today. Um, you know, I wonder if you could just paint a bit of a picture for us about what a blue Christmas is, it looks like. So it's it's Thursday before yeah. Christmas, right? So yes, yeah, so this is the Thursday before Christmas, um, December 19, 7 p.m. So we'll just run through a service, and it really is our heart is to facilitate a space for people to come to be okay, not being okay. Yeah, um, yeah. Come and name those yeah. emotions and bring them before God. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we try and make it a quite a comfortable, kind of intimate setting service-wise. And yeah, there'll be some some readings and some reflections, some, mm. some guided prayers. You know, we'll, do, we'll do a couple of song, appropriate Christian songs, carols. Um, but, but really, the heart will be to give people the opportunity to connect with those emotions, have a facilitated space where they can have permission to experience those at Christmas but invite God into the midst of that story. So uh, that's the sort of service on the 19th. Will you unpack the the Christian the Christmas narrative around, you know, where people can find all those diverse emotions? Is that where you do that or are you just, that's just part of it? Like, so when you were explaining people's feelings that are tied in there, is that yeah, part of it in the Christmas well? story? Yeah. And we will absolutely yeah, kind of reset that back in, in the scripture, yeah. back very much in um, the ways that, the Christmas story is described in the Bible, how we see Jesus entering into that brokenness and that pain, identifying with us in our weaknesses. They're the sorts of things that we'll reflect on together in that space. There, there will be some chances to do some interactive participatory things, uh, but there's no obligation to do that as well. So we try to make it as um, permissive a space as possible. Some yeah. people will, will want to engage and you know, talk to somebody after the service and maybe yeah. even receive prayer. That'll be available. For others, they'll want to come in and it'll just want to be between them and God, and that's totally fine. So it's a come-as-you-are yeah. type service yeah. um, and get what you need from God out of it. For some, for some, you know, there'll be an opportunity at, um, at an encounter with Christ that is the commencement of something deeply transformative. Mm. For some, the miracle will be even just walking in the door. Mm. Yeah. And so, hey, listeners, if you're, if you're a follower of Jesus and you know someone in that, <clears throat> in that space, yeah. walk walk them in the door with you like you know yeah. you know yeah. th- start planning now there's an opportunity um you could you know it, it, it's thursday before christmas i think you said it's the 19th didn't we yeah december 19th um, yeah. 7 p.m yeah. thursday yeah. before christmas you know so if you know someone who's is walking through a fairly dark space you go right you i'm taking you somewhere that mm. thursday put it in the calendar yeah. i'm going to bring you i'll yeah. pick you up and and get you in the door you're not um, going to get a car park at Thursday night shopping anyway, so there you go. that close to Christmas. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, so do that. Like, be, don't don't just say, "Oh, I heard this thing's on, and why don't you go?" But like, be the be the catalyst, if you like, or the 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 active referral, the participating mm. with that person. And I can quickly say something as well. No matter what you're experiencing, you're welcome at this service. Yeah. So you you don't need to qualify you know yeah. if you're like oh my grief's not like theirs like that comparison thing yeah no if you've if there's just some sadness that mm. you can't even put your finger on that you're carrying this christmas eve and yeah come and let's uh, let's That's invite god into that so space so good yeah because i'm convinced right now there's this that's that's a really big deal mm. something's going on for me and i can't put my finger on it yeah. that's that's a 
big deal. Like that's a he, take that opportunity. You mm. know, like wonderful, wonderful. And so we know we know where that is. And look, listen, you might be a part of another Christian fellowship. Going, gee, our, our church could put something like that on as well. Yes. Why don't you Why don't you just make a point of of getting to that service and and maybe having a look at what the guys at Narara Valley do and and maybe even have a conversation with Pastor Travel, your leadership team, mm. and go, hey, next year we want to build that into yeah. our, our, our thing as well. It would be a great opportunity for you to see how it's done, see how you walk mm. with people in that context and, yeah. and see it replicated out. I'm, I reckon it's a beautiful gift to, to community, mm. um, you know, this thing. And so thank you for, for uh, putting it on. Thank you for having it in your heart to walk with people through mm. – you know that that difficult space. Um, you know where where people's feelings aren't lining up with the hallmark narrative mm. of Christmas. Um, and thank you uh, for providing a space where people can know Christ with them mm. as a very tangible presence of comfort and more mm. uh, in in that season. Mm. Thank you for willing to be willing to share as well too. Because mm. most people like you know we don't copy what I'm doing. <laughs> no. No, I'd worry if no one was copying it. Thank you. The fact that, you know, share it, because I think more of this should happen. More of it should be out there. Yeah, the need is there in our churches oh, yeah. and in our communities, and it makes sense for yes. the church to be on the front foot in this. Yeah. yeah. So, again, it's Thursday the 19th at Narara Valley Baptist Church, 7 p.m. service. Yep. 7 p.m. All the details are on our website. You can yep. find yeah. There. And, and the testimony from last year is this lady who I know and walk with who, who's found a beautiful space to walk out her grief in that that context, um, you know, it's been a, a great a great gift to her and and to many others as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, before we forget, don't forget Greenpoint Baptist Church have a mosaic service too as well. I think it's, I think I said it was a Christmas service, but I'm pretty sure Greenpoint Baptist has a website you can check it out there. So, yep. And if you're up in the Wyong area, look up uh, Wyong Anglican because uh, Reverend Alex will be putting something similar on in that context mm-hmm. too. And, and again, I think these are wonderful gifts to the, the community, to our mm. city, to help our city walk through mm. some tough stuff. Yeah. Mm. And there's plenty of tough stuff out there. Um, Pastor Travis, I'd, I'd love for you to, to you know, to, maybe to bring a prayer on behalf of the region, um, you know, because particularly those who they can't even put mm. their finger on, why am I just out of whack at the moment, you know? And for those who are grieving, um, yeah. would you bring a prayer for them? Oh, I'd so love to do that. I know this is the very real, raw, authentic stuff of everyday life. So would you allow me to pray? Yeah. Uh, Heavenly Father, we want to thank you so much for the Christmas story. Yes. Um, and that it's a story of you, Father, yeah. coming to earth and giving your son Emmanuel to be with us. Amen. Uh, so, Lord, I just want to pray for anyone and everyone listening uh, who's carrying some level of grief or disappointment, mm-hmm. uh, hurt or heartache. Yeah. God, would you be with them yes. right there yes. in the midst of that? Yes. <coughs> we recognize, God, that in many ways Christmas can be a difficult one for us as all these things are raised in our mind. And so, Lord, I would ask in a blessing that you would... Uh, enable us to sense your presence uh, at this time yeah. and in so doing to gain courage and comfort in the days to come. Yes, Lord. May we know your healing in our grief, mm. your peace in our loss yeah. and your strength in our frailty. Yes, Father. Amen. Yeah, Amen. Amen. See you next week, folks. You've been listening to an encore presentation of New Expressions, which can be heard live every Friday morning at 10am on 94.9 Rima Central Coast.